right now on Denver 7 News at 4, a chaotic scene at DIA, frightening passengers and employees. She even ran after a passenger and tried to hit him because he was trying to calm her down and it was kind of scary. What happened with this disturbance and why the suspect had the outburst in the first place? Many mothers rely on Medicaid to give birth. Now there's a debate over extending that coverage longer. Why what happens after a mother and baby head home is under new scrutiny. And stricter voting laws are under the microscope with the midterm elections. The impact the new rules are having on getting people to vote. Plus, protecting your child against dangerous invitations online. What Colorado is doing to crack down on fentanyl dealers using social media. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jason Grenauer. First at four, a 21 year old woman was taken into custody Tuesday afternoon after threatening several employees and passengers at the DIA check in. Police say the woman jumped onto the luggage conveyor belt and caused a disruption. An employee at DIA who witnessed the incident said the woman threatened to shoot people if she was unable to get a ticket to New York. At one point, viewer footage shows the woman chasing a passenger near the check in area. When officers arrived, the woman crawled into the baggage sorting area, but was taken into custody shortly after. I didn't know if she had a real gun or even a knife. Um, and if she did pull out something, I would have to stand in the way. That way nobody gets hurt. That coming from an employee. Now, the encounter did get physical. Police say the woman, the woman struck an officer when paramedics arrived and tried to intervene. She's being held on those potential charges. A well, charging moose injured two people and a dog in Boulder County this morning. The sheriff's office says it happened near the West Magnolia Trailhead near Netherland. A responding deputy had to scare off the moose several times, but ultimately had to shoot and kill it because it would not stop charging. The man was taken to the hospital with serious injuries and a woman with minor injuries. Their dog was also injured, but no word on how bad. Now, this isn't the only moose related incident today in Thornton. Colorado Parks and Wildlife officers captured a moose by the Todd Creek Golf Club. They tranquilized it and brought it back up into the mountains. With the primaries just about 20 days away, there's an effort by a group based in Grand Junction to get more people to participate by disassociating with a political party. Restore the Balance is a group that studies the data. They've seen more people drop their party affiliation in order to vote in either party's primary. That's especially true in the 3rd Congressional District, the western half of the state represented right now by Lauren Boebert. If you look at the 3rd District as a whole, uh, Democrats there have lost 6, 000, over 6,200 fewer um, registrations. The Republicans, interestingly enough, have in, in 23 of 26 counties, they've actually gained a very small number of registrations. Now they say this data could mean an upset is in store for incumbents there, but they still believe Republicans have a stronghold on that district as a whole. Their words were intense and heartbreaking. Survivors, doctors, and families from Buffalo and Uvalde faced Congress today, telling members they need to meet the urgency of this moment and pass gun reforms now. Mike Valerio has the latest on the testimonies. We do want to warn you, some of the testimony is highly emotional and may be disturbing. Somewhere out there, there is a mom listening to our testimony, thinking I can't even imagine their pain, not knowing that our reality will one day be hers, unless we act now. Kimberly and Felix Rubio lost their daughter Lexi in Uvalde, murdered only 15 days ago. Fourth grader Mia Cerillo survived the slaughter in her Robb Elementary classroom, playing dead by smearing blood on her body. I thought he was going to come back to the room, so I grabbed the blood and I put it all over me. In the middle of this national horror, anguish on Capitol Hill as victims desperately pleaded with lawmakers to take action. You are elected because you have been chosen and are trusted to protect us. But let me say to you here today, I do not feel protected. Zanetta Everhart's son, Zaire, survived the Buffalo massacre. Everhart told members of the House her son will have shrapnel in his body for the rest of his life. 
A pediatrician who responded in Uvalde told Congress children's bodies were pulverized and decapitated by the bullets. We are lying on the operating table, riddled with bullets like the children of Robb Elementary and so many other schools. Miguel Cerillo followed his daughter's video testimony, saying although she survived, she will never be the same. She's not the same little girl that I used to play with and run with. She was daddy's little girl. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. Now, also in Washington the af this afternoon, the House just wrapped up two hours of debate on gun control and are now taking a series of votes on a package that includes many of the gun reforms the Biden administration has called for in recent weeks. Now, that package includes things like raising the age to buy semi-automatic weapons, banning high-capacity magazines, banning bump stocks and ghost guns, increasing storage requirements, and cracking down on so-called straw purchases of guns. Now, versions of these types of measures have been passed by the House in the past, but then have stalled in the Senate. So I asked Congresswoman Diana DeGette, what's different this time? I think that the, the, that the nation, with the Uvalde shooting and all of the other mass shootings we had just in the last couple of weeks, I think the attention is on this. I think the political will is there, and I'm hoping we have a solid vote today and the Senate will take it up. We will keep you posted on the outcome of those votes. Now, separately, a bipartisan Senate group is meeting to discuss guns. CNN is reporting that group says they are making progress, but the timing of a deal is still unclear. Well, in Colorado, cities in the metro area are taking actions on guns. Boulder City Council passed several gun control measures more than a year after the King Super shooting. The most notable, a ban on the sale and possession of assault weapons. The city council also voted to ban ghost guns, raise the age to buy a gun to 21, and add a 10-day waiting period to purchase a gun after a background check is completed. You can find more information on gun control measures passed in other cities on the DenverChannel.com. Superior's Board of Trustees passed some of the strictest firearm restrictions last night. Six gun ordinances passed a second reading in Louisville. And in Lafayette, City Council passed a first reading for ordinances prohibiting open carry in public places and on city property and requiring gun dealers to post signs at all locations where sales and transfers take place. You can find more information on the gun control measures up right now on the DenverChannel.com. Turning to the newsfeed, 90 women, including Olympic gymnasts, today filed claims against the FBI for allegedly mishandling the Larry Nassar investigation. They're seeking more than $1 billion in damages. They say the Bureau didn't stop the former sports doctor when it first received abuse allegations against him. The law enforcement arrested an armed man near Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh's home in Maryland today. They say he was armed with a gun and knife, telling officers he wanted to kill Kavanaugh. The justices have round the clock security at their homes amid concerns about violence ahead of the court's abortion ruling. President Biden will meet with allies in Germany and Spain later this month amid the war in Ukraine. The White House announced today Biden will attend summits with G7 summit leaders and NATO member countries. Leaders will discuss their support for Ukraine, climate change, global health security, and a worsened food and energy crisis. Well, with summer travel in full swing, we're looking at what that means for COVID cases. What doctors are saying about a possible surge now or this fall. Also coming up, gas prices continue to skyrocket from coast to coast. What lawmakers are doing to try to help and what this means for your spending habits.